I'd like to welcome you to Scripture Twisting 101. As always, every video will be dealing with one particular verse, either from the Quran or from the Bible. Today's verse deals with the idea that Islam is a religion of tolerance, and the verse in reference here comes from chapter 60 of the Quran, verse 8, and it reads, Allah does not forbid you to deal justly and kindly with those who fought not against you on account of religion and did not drive you out of your homes. Verily, Allah loves those who deal with equity. David, mm -hmm. what is wrong with this verse? It's clearly talking about love, justice, kindness. Well, I mean, one, you have, once again, you have to think about the level of desperation here, right? Yeah. Um, we point out verse after verse after verse in the Quran, calling for the violent subjugation of Christians, Jews, um, polytheists, and so on. You find the same thing in the Hadith. And so when we see various uh, Islamic groups going around violently subjugating people, we point out the passages that lead to these things. And we uh, show these kinds of passages to people in the West who are claiming, oh, those aren't real Muslims who are doing exactly what Muhammad and Allah commanded them to do. No, those aren't real Muslims because, and chapter 60, verse 8, is one of the most common passages. It's uh, along with Surah 2, verse 256, probably the one I see most to show that Islam is a religion of peace. Uh, notice what it says, though. <clears throat> this doesn't command anyone to... Um, to deal kindly and justly with other people. That's right. There's a condition. Yeah, he, he says, well, even then, he's not, he's not commanding you. He says he doesn't forbid you, right? So in other words, hey, I have family members coming and visiting me. They haven't subjugated me. They haven't attacked me. They haven't uh, criticized my religion. Um, can I be nice to them when they get here? Or do I have to just shower them with abuse and contempt? And here you have no... You're allowed. You're allowed to be nice to them, right? It's not. Hey, you have to be. You have to be nice. Command, it's yeah. Allah doesn't forbid you from being nice. You keep, have a choice. Keep, yeah. Keep <laughs> keep in mind, as we'll see. This is this has been abrogated. Even this even this has been abrogated. We're just saying. Hey, even if we ignore the doctrine of abrogation, even if we ignore Muslim commentaries even if we ignore the historical background, even if we ignore the rest of the passage, and we just focus on what this is saying, even this, one of the two most popular passages that Muslims use to show that Islam is a religion of peace, even this doesn't say, hey, you need to be kind and just towards all people. No, 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 no. First of all, the, the, the only people in focus here are people who haven't done anything to you. But even then, it's not, hey, deal kindly and justly with people who haven't attacked you. It's just, all that it's saying is, you're allowed to if you want. You're allowed to be kind and just. And again, that's if we ignore everything else. All right, Sam, what do you yep. think about this? Another thing that the non-Muslims have to keep in mind, because non-Muslims do not equate, let's say, criticism as a form of fighting, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if I criticize you, you may criticize me, but that's not grounds for him to pick up a sword and you know, <clears throat> chop off my neck or pick up a gun and shoot me, right? <clears throat> Islamically speaking, when it talks about waging war against Muslims, fighting Allah and His Messenger, Islam defines criticism of Islam, criticism of Allah, criticism of Muhammad, questioning whether Muhammad is a prophet, questioning his, his morality, questioning his lifestyle, questioning whether the Quran is from God. That's considered waging war. That's considered fighting with your tongues. And that's grounds for Muslims to attack, subjugate, and or kill you. And here's the proof. <clears throat> chapter 60, verse 2, the same chapter of the Quran, chapter 60, verse 2, because what did 60, verse 8 say? That Allah doesn't forbid you from showing kindness to those who do not war with you. Well, hold on. Let's see what fighting or making war with Islam looks like from a Muslim perspective. Chapter 60, verse 2, same chapter of the Quran, if they come on you, they will be enemies to you and stretch against you their hands and their tongues to do you evil, and they wish that you may disbelieve. So it's not just physically attacking Muslims, it's attacking Muslims verbally, criticizing That's right. Muhammad. That's right. Saying Muhammad is a womanizer or a pedophile. That's grounds for Muslims to attack you. That's grounds for Muslims to kill you, if not subjugate you, because that's considered warfare. That's further confirmed by two other verses in the Quran. Chapter 9, verse 12. Watch here. And by the way, 
chapter 9. We're going to revisit that that's right. a little later. And that's the last chapter that was supposedly composed by Muhammad, his final marching order, so to speak. Chapter 9, verse 12. But if they violate their oaths after their covenant and attack your religion with disapproval and criticism. Notice, attack your religion how? By disapproving of it and criticizing it, then fight you, the leaders of disbelief. For surely their oaths are nothing to them so that they may stop evil actions. So if I fight Muslims by criticizing Islam and disapproving of Islam, that is grounds for Muslims to attack me and or <clears throat> kill me. Now, chapter 9, verse 32. They, and again I'm reading Halali Khan that provides explanation within parentheses, they, the disbelievers, the Jews and Christians, want to extinguish Allah's light with their mouths. That is to say, with their swords, with their war horses, with their missiles, no, with their mouths. They want to extinguish Islam with their mouths by saying Muhammad is a false prophet, he's a fraud. But Allah will not allow except that his light should be perfected even though the kafirun disbelievers hate it. So what's the point? Criticizing Islam is declaring war against Allah and His Messenger. And that's grounds for Muslims to attack you and or kill you <clears throat> and oppress you. Now, there's more to chapter 60, isn't there, is there not? Oh yeah, there's, there's verse 4 where they have Abraham as an example, according to the Quran. So check this out. So this is verse 4. Again, same chapter. Same chapter that Muslims are quoting to show that Islam is peaceful and tolerant. Chapter 60, verse 4. Indeed, there has been an excellent example for you in Ibrahim, Abraham, and those with him, when they said to their people, Verily, we are free from you, and whatever you worship besides Allah... We have rejected you, and there has started between us and you hostility and hatred forever until you believe in Allah alone. Hmm. Right? And that's Abraham's there example? Yeah, so, so, so no, notice what the Quran does here, right? It lays down Abraham as an example and says, Abraham said to his people, to his people, Hey, guys. I preached Islam to you, you didn't believe me, and now there is hatred and hostility between us forever until you believe in Allah alone. The context of chapter 60 verse 8 then would have to be, wait a minute, does that mean I have to just shower hatred and hostility on everybody? How am I going to win someone to Islam if, if I can't you know, even be nice to them at all or something like that? And then the qualification comes in, Wait a minute, if you want to, if you want to be nice to someone for some particular reason and that person has never done anything to the Muslim community, has never criticized you in any way, you can, if you want. And <laughs> that, that is supposedly one of the most peaceful passages in the Quran, which shows how peaceful and tolerant is. And, how toler peaceful and tolerant Islam is. So just that I get this point, because this is going to perfectly tie in with chapter 9, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Abraham is declaring his hatred towards them, not because they threatened to kill him, right? Mm -hmm. It's because they refused to worship mm -hmm. the way Abraham worships. So in other words, Abraham is declaring war, enmity, and hatred solely because they refused to embrace his religion. Mm -hmm. Nothing physical. No physical violence. They didn't turn, we're going to kill you, Abraham, we're going to beat you in this particular context. They, they have to believe. They have to believe in Allah alone. That's exactly the context of chapter 9, verse 20, in which so Lord This is the model, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> notice what Muhammad did. He modeled Abraham after himself. He made Abraham resemble him and put in Abraham's mouth the very criticism, the very objections, the very hatred that Muhammad felt towards the unbelievers, not because they threatened to kill him physically, but because they refused to accept him as a prophet. So are you telling me the story in Genesis 14 when Abraham went and rescued Lot is a false story? <laughs> well, that wasn't because of religious differences, if anything, that shows that Abraham <clears throat> lived in the midst of pagans right. and even tolerated it because it wasn't his job to force them to become worshipers of Yahweh. He was rescuing his nephew. Let me just uh, give the comment from, because uh, yes. I had mentioned earlier that, uh, so notice we gave every benefit of the doubt. All we did was read the passage in context to show that, wow, if this is the best you've got, claiming that Islam is peaceful, and, and, and it's a passage where there has to be endless hostility and anger between Muslims and non-Muslims, that's what the passage is declaring. It's just saying, hey, if you want to, you can be nice in certain circumstances. Um, if that's the best, <clears throat> wow. But even that, yeah. even that one thing yeah. <clears throat> was abrogated, was abrogated by later commands to fight people 
simply because of their belief. So at that point, it, it's not, hey, has this person done anything to the Muslim community? Has he persecuted you? Has he criticized your religion? It's just, does this person believe what you believe? And then they're, they're, once Surah 9 is revealed, they're supposed to fall back to that pattern that Abraham supposedly had, right. which is endless hostility, all we can do is fight because until you believe in Islam. Uh, so again, this is not according to us. Uh, we'll be examining, uh, as Sam pointed out, Surah 9 in, in more detail. But just let me give you the commentary of Tafsir Jalalain, one of the most respected Muslim commentaries of all time. And this is his commentary on chapter 60, verse 8. Allah does not forbid you in regard to those who did not wage war against you from among the disbelievers on account of religion and did not expel you from your homes that you should treat them kindly. Now watch what he says now. This was revealed before the command to struggle against them. In other words, struggle is jihad. Yeah, that's right. This is revealed before the command to wage jihad against them. Right? So notice what, notice what he's saying here. Yes, you were allowed to be nice in certain circumstances to people if they hadn't persecuted you, hadn't, hadn't uh, uh, criticized your religion. But this was abrogated by the command later to fight those who do not believe. You have to fight people based on their beliefs. That's wow! Right. Is everyone seeing how peaceful this is? Yeah, and it says here in the Arabic that this command to deal with them justly was given before the command to fight them in a holy war, in jihad. But mm. here's a catch, by the way. Al-Jalalain says that when it says those who fought not against you, this participle, he says that was given as a condition to a specific group. In other words, the rest of them do not qualify for this. <laughs> That's what yeah. he's saying. No, but it's a, it's a peaceful religion, a tolerant religion that goes out of its way to forbid its adherents from fighting anyone. And fighting is a last resort. That's what my Muslim friends keep telling me. That's what Shibra Ali tries to convince me of That's all right. the time. That's right. All Gentlemen, right. may peace be upon both of you. Thank you. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.